Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. We're here today, brand new episode 2980 of the Cabral Concept. We're gonna be going over new research. I have new research today and tomorrow, so you wanna stay tuned for tomorrow's show as well. But today's on microplastics and nanoplastics in the blood brand new study that came out and how it leads not only to cardiovascular disease, but early mortality. Then I'm going to share with you the most common sources of these plastics, what to do to begin to eliminate them, remove them from your body so that you are not a victim. And again, knowledge is power. It's not about fear, but it's these patients didn't know about it, right? We want future people to know about it because this is never something they're going to talk about in the media. This is never something that you'll really see in print. What we have to understand is that most of this is being kept from us, and here's why. Plastics and anything like big tech, big pharma, big farm, right, big agriculture, are all going to have billions of dollars in lobbying to make sure that these products are always able to be kept in the marketplace. And remember, the people that they're lobbying are humans, and when you offer them millions of dollars, especially when they get out of office and they serve on all these boards, that... They're human and they say, yes, they say, sure, we'll push it through. And once you see this, I think you'll understand again, it's not about fear, but it is about knowledge and making the right choices for you and your family. Trust me, you'll be happy that you did. Okay, so let's get right into it right into the results. A total of 304 patients, and by the way, I'm going to link this up, this is in the New England Journal of Medicine. So it's not like this isn't a reputable journal, it might be the most reputable journal. So let's check this out. A total of 304 patients were enrolled in the study, and 257 completed a mean follow-up of 33.7 months, uh, plus or minus 6.9, so about a three-year follow-up, all right? Polyethylene was detected in the carotid artery. I'll explain what polyethylene is, most common plastic in the world. So again, like we always think, well, I'm probably not exposed. I thought that too. Like I'm not exposed to polyethylene. Uh, trust me, you are. I was as well. All right. So the carotid artery is the one in the neck that leads up to the brain. All right. So we, it was, uh, polyethylene was detected in 150 patients, 58.4. So let's say not quite two thirds, but about 60% or so with a mean level of 217 uh, units of plaque, 31 patients also had measurable amounts of polyvinyl chloride, which with a level mean of 5.2, I won't get into all of that for you. Electron microscopy revealed visible jagged edged foreign particles among the plaque uh, macrophages in scattered in external debris. Radiographic examination showed that some of these particles included chlorine. Patients in whom microplastics and nanoplastics were detected within the atheroma, well, that's a new one for me, atheroma, oh no, atheroma, okay, I just mispronounced it, uh, were at a higher risk for primary endpoint event than those in these substances were not detected. In the study, patients with carotid artery plaque in which microplastics and nanoplastics were detected had a higher risk of a composite of myocardial infarction, stroke, or early death from any cause at, 35, at 34 months of follow-up than those where microplastics were not detected. Let's go over that one last time, just that last Last sentence there. If you had microplastics in your blood, you had a higher risk for a heart attack. That's what myocardial infarction means. That's why I want to just explain these things to you. Stroke or death from any cause, all cause mortality. So you have microplastics in your blood, higher risk of all cause mortality within essentially the next three years. This is unbelievably important. How do they find this? They were actually going in and removing the plaque in the arteries around the heart. They examined the plaque and they found these plastics. These plastics under a microscope essentially had jagged edges. What they found was these plastics were creating most likely inflammation that may have been increasing plaque or inflammation and damage to the arteries in the body. If you damage the arteries in the body, what can happen? Peripheral nervous, nervous, uh, nervous system damage, stroke, right? Blood pressure based issues, heart attack. Okay. Well, those are basically the top three causes of mortality. So now we see why it can increase all cause mortality as well because it's inflammatory, but those are also the top three causes of all mortality. So this is pretty a pretty wild study. Finally, microplastics are being talked about and this thing called polyethylene. Well, you might be asking, what is polyethylene? Polyethylene is the most common plastic in the world. 
So literally, we're all exposed to it. I'm exposed to it because I'm a human that walks around in this world. Uh, you're exposed to it. All of our family is exposed to it. So our job is just to cut down on it. Why is it so uh, pervasive in the environment? Here's why. It's used in so much packaging. So plastics, shrink wrap, film packaging, uh, it's used in all hard plastics, milk jugs, detergent bottles, grocery bags, and it's also used, uh, so that's the high density and the low density is the base of the plastic wrap. Okay, so let me put this in an easier way. High density, uh, it's HDPE, is used when something has to have a firm bottle, like a milk jug or a detergent bottle. And then low density PE, is used when it's saran wrap, plastic wrap, et cetera, right? Or the almost like the light bottles. Uh, HDPE, which I talked about for the milk, the juice, the shampoo, so basically bath-based products, that's the HDPE. Plastic bags, both HDPE and LDPE are used in those. What about household goods? Think about it, plastic bowls, buckets, cutting boards, plastic toys, all of those things, polyethylene. This is why you can start to see it's so uh, ubiquitous in our, in our world. Construction materials, we'll be talking about that in the next one. But pipes is a big one, but I want to get to that in just a motive, in just a minute. Automotive parts, that's where my, my brain is going next. Uh, agricultural applications, so polyethylene film is used uh, exclusively in agriculture-based applications. So including like greenhouse coverings is, is a big one. Mulch film, you know, you basically put it over the grass, put the mulch on top. Okay, well, there's more polyethylene. Uh, and even furniture as well, things can be coated in polyethylene. Now, the next one, which is, wasn't as high in people's blood, but still high, is polyvinyl chloride. Now, polyvinyl chloride is a fascinating one because if you have water flowing to your home, you most likely have some polyvinyl chloride in that water or exposure, and that is because your pipes are made from something you probably called heard called PVC. PVC, not all of them, but PVC allows the water to flow through. It's a plastic pipe. Pretty sturdy, holds up for a long time, and uh, and that so the water your water literally flows through polyvinyl chloride. So it's used in piping, it's used in plumbing, it's used in medical devices like um, tubing for IVs, dialysis, uh, all sorts of products like that. It's used in cable installation, it's used in flooring and roofing base materials, more automotive parts, furniture and upholstery whenever there's a need for a strong hard plastic, it can be used there. Clothing and accessories, anytime you're waterproofing clothing, raincoats, boots, bags, things like that, it can be coated with this P. PVC. It's also used sometimes in uh, various toys, uh, etc. So pretty fascinating. One is that plastic is all around us. So what do we do? Do we just you know completely go out of our minds and just say we're being exposed to all this plastic? Well, um, the interesting thing that almost two thirds had plastic in their blood, but one third didn't. So what are those one third doing? One, I believe that they're still being exposed, but not to the same level. Right, so what are they doing? Well, they're trying to use a glass water bottle. They're trying to use a water filter. They're being more cautious about all the plastic they're carrying around, all the plastic bag, all the receipts, all the different things that they're touching. You know, whenever possible, all I do is I have a bunch of those crinkled up old recycled, not the recycled bags, but you know the ones that you can take with you, the lightweight bags for shopping, right? I'm not perfect about it by any stretch of the imagination. I'm really not. But I have a little flexible canvas tote bag that's all wrinkled up in my truck. I just take that, I'll bring it in whenever I'm going to a place like a CVS or a Walgreens or any place like that that I might need to pick something up as well as the grocery food store. I just don't bring eight bags into the grocery food store, but I've got two or three in my truck and um, hopefully I remember it and I just bring them in. Okay, so that's one, that's a simple one. The second one is my family wasn't perfect. We were still doing some plastic bottles and just because it was easy and they didn't break and you could have them delivered. But now we said, you know what? We need to make the switch. So first we've had a water filter forever. So we always did that. But if we drank sparkling water, well, we wanted sparkling water. So now that's in glass bottles. It, does it cost a little bit more? It does. Honestly, it does. But I just don't want to end up with more of the microplastics in my blood. And these things are shipped on hot trucks and the plastics are getting into the water. Okay. So those are some of the things that I've decided to do. And then the other one for, for when you have little kids, I think this is important that we make sure that the paint can't be chewed off, that these plastic toys don't go in kids' mouths. That's, that's um, uh, just a kind of a do the best that you can. I know, obviously, I've had two kids 
uh, it's not necessarily, it's easier said than done, right? So that's a big thing. And then the PVC pipes, you really can't get away with that or away from that for most people unless you're maybe building new construction. But what you can do is, again, get yourself a good water filter. We've got a bunch of great recommendations at stephencabal.com slash resources. So one more thing I want to share with you is that since we are all being exposed, you do want to, it is really important that you focus on detoxification. So many people don't like the word, but honestly, it is what it is. Like we need to be doing that. Some people are doing it automatically and they can talk negatively or positively about it. Doesn't matter to me. Detoxification is a natural process of the body and you need to help improve it. So what things help improve it? Cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, uh, you know, all the things that people like to talk about, plant toxins and all that. But you get your your broccoli, your Brussels sprouts, you get your bok choy, you get some asparagus, you get cauliflower, you get a lot of cruciferous vegetables, two, three cups a day. That would be phenomenal, okay? You keep your body hydrated. You sweat on a near daily basis. You use your nutritional supplements, things like sulforaphane and taurine. We have a product called Daily Detox Support. Great product. You do a functional medicine detox once a quarter. The one that we use at stephencabral.com slash detox. Look at the ingredients. See how it's laid out. See the fasting days. You can use any company in the world that you want, but try to mimic it. Like Try to do the things that we know work. The sweating works. The foods work. The supplements work. All of these things help to remove these things from our bodies. So this is just crucial that we're aware of it, that we don't fear it, but we do have the knowledge to make sure we're cutting down and continuing to empty our rain barrel. All right. Hopefully today was helpful. I'm going to link up the study for you. All the resources, we can't link up nutritional supplements, but you can always find them at stephencabal.com slash shop. Use whatever brand you like. I just want to show you exactly what we do in our practice, working now with well over uh, well over a quarter of a million people, running hundreds of thousands of labs. So we see this, we know it's working, and you can find all of the resources at stephencabal.com slash resources as well. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing day. I'll be back tomorrow with another huge study you won't want to miss on red light and actually lowering blood glucose levels. Take care. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.